morning or good afternoon or good evening. So welcome to our webinar here in CN Segura. So my name is Felipe Pires. Let me introduce myself. I'm a security research at CN Segura. And um, I would like to invite you to Gabriel to stay with us. And Gabriel, welcome aboard and present yourself, my friend. Thank you, Felipe. Uh, hello, my name is Gabriel Oba and I work uh, as a product owner here at Sem Segura. Nice, nice. Welcome everyone. So I would like to make a question with you. And uh, so uh, I'm seeing here in the chat, so some, some people from Germany, other people from Brazil. So I'd like to, to, to know, so what exactly country or city the people are participating here in our webinar? So if you can write in the chat, Nice, Aline from Milan, Italy, awesome. Belgium, awesome. Romania, so many countries. Netherlands, awesome. South of Africa, very, very nice, very nice. Because of this, I said to morning, uh, good morning, because I'm talking from Brazil now here in my small office in my balcony by the way you know it's a, a pandemic so we need to make some adaptations and um yes from czech republic nice nice last year i visited uh, czech republic it's awesome place very nice so cool everyone so uh, again so thank you for staying with us and let's talk about this main topic today about the ransomware and um can you let me share my screen here? And I'd like to share some information with you. So let me uh, invite you because during this uh, day or during this conversation, my idea with you is to explain more, more about how the ransomware works, how the malware actually works. And um, and I'm looking in my, in my right side, in this case, into the chat. So if you have some questions, uh, you have the Q&A button, actually you can, uh, if you prefer, you can use in this bottom in the Q&A, or if you'd like to write something in the chat, right? So I can look there in my right side and I can see, and let's see this uh, in this webinar like a conversation, right? So let me share my screen with you here and um, here, okay. Okay, can you see my screen? Let's see if you can see my screen here. Can you see my screen? Yes, okay. So this is my web page. Just some information has I mentioned about me. And the idea here is just to, if you'd like to see another talks about this specific topic, about the malware, about the ransomware, about offensive security, you can check here in presentation talks. And you can see here different presentations uh, that I made in some events about, for example, in, in talks in English, in Portuguese, and in Spanish, if you want, right? And here you can see some articles published, just some information uh, interesting. And here I have my GitHub, so Philip86. So if you'd like to see some, for example, uh, projects that have been worked, you can see some repositories and some, some projects that have been working to see about the tradi hunting, more topics about the um, security, right? So this is the very important. Again, I'm a security research at Senha Segura. I'm a part of this, there's some other project like a hack is not a crime. The idea behind of this project is to talk more about the this kind of concept of hacking, because when you see some information on TV or on the newspapers, usually when you see some information about some leaks or um, expose of the information, sometimes we we saw about the hacker, but it's not a hacker, it's a cyber criminal. Just to, important to clarify that. That's, that's the idea of this project, to talk more about the, this concept, because hacking is a mindset and how you can look into the some applications or some software and you can use in your creative mind, right? So of, of course, you when you discover some vulnerabilities, it's very important that you report that to some, uh, for example, some security vendor or some company. But when you using this to uh, another good way, so it's uh, it means it's more a cyber criminal, right? So let's talk about our main topic, and uh, this is a very very interesting repository I would like to share with you. So a malware, a bazaar doc, a boost doc, as 
um, CH, right? So I don't know if you know this uh, awesome repository. You can click here in our Bazaar database, right? And if you see here, this is a database of the community with the many, many different malwares that you can see here. So all those are real malwares, right? So I will demonstrate some of some ransomware here. And if you just put in your, your eyes here in this web page, you can see here some, for example, ransomware in this case. So let me put in here so high. As you can see here, this is another ransomware. And uh, all those repository, it's maintaining from the community, right? So basically you can upload here if you, find some uh, malware in your environment, you can upload that. You can provide this information to the community. Let me explain more information about this repository. If you see here, you have many informations about the IOCs of this malware. I don't know if you know what is exactly IOC. It's a chronomy of the indicator of compromise, right? So, I mean, it's all those informations related to some attack, like for example, uh, chat 256 or another different reference of this kind of attack or for example part of the or, or some website related to these attacks for example and all those informations it's about the iocs so as you can see here's another information about the threat intelligence as you can see here so about some for example using some uh, sandbox if you don't know what is exactly a sandbox sandbox is a part of the uh, actually a virtual machine, but is, is the place when you can run a malware inside of this controlled environment. And inside of this controlled environment, you need to have some engines inside of that to understand what is exactly the behavior of this sample or this malware inside of this controlled environment. This is a sandbox, okay? And here you can see the Joey sandbox is a cloud sandbox. So they uh, analyzed this malware specifically, and here you can see the results. So as you can see here, you have different behaviors of this specific malware, just to show you how this works exactly, this web uh, page and this research of the malware, okay? And here is the very common virus total. As you can see here, let me click here in the virus total just, just to show you. Probably you already heard about the virus total, okay? So here, virus total is basically, um, Another repository, it's an antivirus scanning, right? Uh, responsible to provide some information about some malware. You can upload that file. You can uh, check, for example, so if you have some URL, malicious URL, and uh, or if you have some, for example, um, domain malicious or another information. Behind of the virus total, you have many engines provide for these specific security vendors, right? And for example, let's see a bit Defender, Fortnet, Casper Sky, Microsoft, and so on and so on. And they, these specific vendors provide some engines from the virus total. And when you perform some antivirus scanning, they uh, are using this specific engine responsible to detect if the sample that you uploaded inside of that it's malicious or not. Just to understand how this is the behavior exactly. Probably if you know, nice. But if you don't know, just explain about that. Okay. So nice, let me uh, now explain something about the malware be, uh, before to start to talk about the RAMs, right? So this is my virtual machine. Basically, I have here different samples or different uh, files here, and I don't know if it's malicious or not. And this is the first point and very important when you looking for some sample, if when you work in your environment, for example, in your company. Uh, one important thing, it's very important you understand is, First of all, when you have something suspicious, uh, you need to understand if it's malicious or not, right? So we need to, this is the first step. And when you perform some more analysis is the identification steps, right? Of course, when you, after you identification steps, you need to, you need to choose what the best methodology you can apply. If you're using, for example, a dynamic analysis or a statistic analysis, it's a two different methodologies, right? That you can use in this kind of analysis. The first analysis, let's see the statistic analysis, you're looking more deeply about the code. You doesn't run the code or the binary itself. You, you analyze the code. If they, the binary has some DLL, for example, dynamic library linked, using to import some function inside of the system operations. So this is the idea of the statistic analysis because this, this is the first step usually used by the, an, an, the researchers or analysts or in, in the 
when you need to perform some analysis, right? On the other hand, you have the dynamic analysis. The dynamic analysis is basically when you run the sample, uh, the idea is in your controlled environment, right? And you perform that, you can see the behavior, right? And of course, you can use in a sandbox. Remember that I explained what is exactly sandbox. You can use in the sandbox to see the behavior so you can automate it using sandbox, right? So this, and after that, you can provide all this information. Okay, nice. Well, well, Philip, I have here some sample and I don't know if it's malicious or not. So the first idea I can use in this tools called file, it's a command, or basically it's a, it's a command, but uh, when you see in the Unix platform, in this case, in the Linux platform, I am using Parity and um, Cal Linux. It's a Debian behind, right? But it's a, one of these machines to use into a, from some researches or penetration tests and so on and so on. So first is I can use in, for example, a uh, file. And after that, I can use it Amazon, for example. And this is in this case, it's a Microsoft Word. It's a document, right? So let's see another here. I have here uh, my friend Bill. I have here my friend Bill. And this is a PDF document. I don't know if it's malicious or not, just to identify what is exactly this binary. Another is this malware hunting Python. By the way, let's check here. It's a malware hunting Python. It's a, it's a text, right? So let me use in here the Python to call this specific file here it's a python recommendation labs tools it's a simple scripting python okay okay but here it's another important thing when you see when you're looking more deeply about the binary for example let me uh, read more information about this malware hunt in this case it's a simple uh, scripting python as you can see here and but uh, when you execute some tools to identify or to to using this identification steps uh, these tools that you, you use in this case file use something uh, to identify that so they need to use in some databases to identify if this is the sample is malicious or not or to understand now it's malicious or not but to identify what is exactly the kind of binary that we have here um, and this is the important thing here for example let me return here no i don't save nothing again if i use in here Take a look at that. just ask a text. It's a simple text. But when you see more deeply about that, we can see the print functions. It's a Python program language, and I'm printing something. But if I can manipulate something in the beginning of this file, as we can see now that I will manipulate now, I can put here, for example, uh, three double commas, as you can see here. Let me save here. Let's see what happened now. I'm saving. Okay, let's using malware, let's me using file once again. And take a look what happened now. Now I have another different information here. We have here a Python script and the file is not only a key text, but now it is executable, right? So let's see one more time if it works the, my code here. So take a look at that. So something is wrong now in this specific file, right? Uh, in something about uh, this uh, printing. But as you can see here in the beginning of this file, something is changing now here. Okay, but I don't know if you don't understand what you changing now. Let me change another thing here. For example, I cut and I put here percent PDF. Let me put dash one doc nine, for example, let me save once again. Save. Let me put here file Mauer Bazaar once Mauer hunting actually, and I click here and take a look what happened now. Now it's not a it's not a Python in this case, it's a PDF document. So take a look what happened now. It's totally different. So what happened now? So something that happened here in this specific file, but I don't know what happened. So that's important thing when you perform some analysis in in some files, right? This is not a Mauer analysis. This is just to can understand how then identification step it's very important and how the attacker or cyber, cyber criminal or uh, um, uh, or for example threat actor this this guy can manipulate something in the beginning of the file this thing it's called it basically magic number this is the information that we can find here inside of the man the manual of the file and here is the simple explanation this file have a magic number stored in particular place place near the beginning of the file. So all those binaries inside of the system operation has 
a magic number, and this information can be manipulated from the attacker, right? So this is important and very, and very important to understand when you perform some analysis, right? Not just only that, but we have more than one different uh, theories important to understand, but it's very important how you can see more deeply about the file, okay? Nice. So we see and we understand. Let me just to show you another information here. Very nice. Let's remember here is a file here. I download this source, basically this um, database of this specifically file, this specific tools, and I will show you here. So as you can see here, here we can see many different uh, rules about the how file works. Let me show you, for example, JavaScript. This is the rules that you can see in the beginning of the file. Let's see, for example, in this case, if I copy this, and let me return here in the in the uh, in the in the our specific file once again. Our hunting. If I cut here and I pass here. Think a look what happened now in this case. I will save once again. And this is the Node.js, Node.js script. So basically, I show you what kind of rules the file use when they is executed in the in the system operations, right? So this is a very important understand. So basically, I'm manipulating the magic number of the file. So many different files can be manipulated, right? So okay. So let's go to the our folder Win. I have here some another different samples, and I would like to show some informations very interesting about this uh, malware for this ransom, right? So I have here the first. It's a who is. I don't know what is exactly the, the name of the file. I just think they have this name, who is. And uh, let's check here if it's a portable executable. It's a portable executable. In this case, it's, it's uh, from Microsoft. So I, if this is specifically executable from a system operation and um, in Microsoft in this case, this is the architecture of this specific uh, sample. And again, it's, it's a Windows. We can use it more than one tools to see more information. The second step that I can perform when I need to analyze, remember, I don't perform a reverse engineer here. Reverse engineer, it's a part of technique using in this dynamic analysis or statistic analysis. You can use in this uh, approach, a reverse engineer, but I'm, I, I, I don't uh, using these in this, uh, in this webinar, okay? Nice, so the second is to see if you can find some information using some strings. But Philippe, what is exactly strings? In this case, let's see what is exactly strings. A string is what? Is a print, the sequence of printable characters in file, right? So how you can see the information inside of this um, specifically binary. For example, if you're using hexadecimal um, file here, and I will put, um, um any dash n uh, for example one um, two thousand just as specific bytes that i would like to show you here and i will set who is and take a look at that so here we, we have some information about extra decimal information here and this and this side basically we have the the how can i say that it's a conversion of the extra decimal in a strings so how the strings works when you see here in an hexadecimal information, and in this case it's a string. So here, as you can see, it's a MZ, it's a, X, it's a, a, sign, a signature for the some uh, binaries in PE, right? So it's a strings. So this is another information here, and this side, it's another strings, right? So let me put in more bytes here, uh, 35. So take a look at that. Here it's a PE. It's a, another kind of signature from the portable executable. So we can see many informations about that, okay? Just to understand simple thing about that. So, okay, so let's see about the strings dash A because I would like to see more information. If you don't know how can using this, you can click just uh, dash H. You can see uh, it's H, it means it's a help, right? And you can see here another flags or comments or um, that you can set here or parameters 
whatever the name, but basically you're using the strings and the options and the file, right? So how you can using this. And dash A is to see they scan the entire file, not just the data sessions. Uh, in this case, is all those binary is, is divided into different sessions, right? So for example, let me explain here, is strings dash A and who is? Always. okay and i put pipe last because probably this file is so big how can i say that if i are using here basically ls ls ace uh, and h l a and h it's a human right so if you see here you have the the size of so 3.4 uh, megabytes of this size of this binary so we have them it's a big in this case and here is a kabyte it's a different and uh, so as you can see here, it's a too big file, right? So once again, it's string dash A and who is and pipe less. And I will start to see uh, to the beginning, right? So I will click enter and take a look at that. I will start to see to the beginning. So if you see here, take a look at the information, very interesting here. The beginning of this string is printed from this, this program can be not run. But if you remember, in this case, when I performed the, ash, the, the hexadecimal, when I executed another command, it started from MZ and not started this program. It started to MZ. Remember that? Let, let me open another terminal here just to show this different here. CSM Mower and the win. Yes, NXT. And let's and it 30. It's 40 and it and see and 100 and please remember that uh, it started here the a string not here why did this happen take a look this is it's very interesting right it should be appears here the mz but didn't appear so why didn't appear and these another string didn't appear here as so some in this case now i can't close this and so something are happening here. And here is the simple explanations once again, because of this very important to understand those bases. So here is the ex simple explanations. Take a look at that for each file given and the strings print the printable character sequence that are at least what, Philip? Four characters. Because of that, as you can see here, didn't appears the MZ. And when you executed the strings here, because just print, it, print for us the four, at least four characters printable. Because of this, we can see uh, just in the beginning of this string, this information, okay? And let's understand more about these strings. And here you can see the dot text or a data, doc data and doc or S or C. This is basically is a session that you have inside of the binary portable executable. Probably we need to have another webinar to talk more about the sessions. Uh, probably we have a we need to have a course to explain about the structure of the portable executable because it's too big and very, very interesting information. Okay. So let's continue to see. We have many other information here. And let's try to understand another thing here. Let me go to below and here we can see, nice. So here we can see others information about the strings. So cl close handle, get as a uh, code process. So terminate process. So <clears throat> here we can see some information, but we didn't know, we don't know exactly in this moment, what is exactly that. Basically guys and ladies, this is the information provided from the, this is the functions inside of the system operation using from some something. Basically, this is our functions using by the some DLLs, dynamically linked library, right? That use it from this specifically sample. This is the point here. So take a look at that. We have a binary, right? We have a portable executable. This binary have some DLLs or using some DLLs, basically they, when this malware is executed in system operation, 
they will use in some DLLs from Microsoft. Remember, this is a portable executable from Microsoft. They will use in this, uh, this DLL, and this DLL is responsible to import some functions. Basically, this is the functions using the system operations. But maybe you are thinking, but Philippe, this function is malicious or not malicious? Good question. This is the point here, because probably some functions, it's not a malicious, but some of these functions, usually some of, not only that, not all those functions, but some functions maybe is a suspicious behavior. Maybe you are thinking, so Philippe, how can I say that? Good questions. You need to learn, you need to study more about that. This is the idea to study about that more about this topic specifically ransomware and malware. And take a look that take a look that here we can see another kernel 32 doc DLL. Remember the as I mentioned DLL. And uh, another take a look that's created directory. So in this case, this specific malware has some directory here because the more important this specific function of the system operation, right? And take a look at that they are using some um, close key, another DLL here. Take a look at that show the thirty-two doc DLL. So we have many different DLL. Let me, oops, take a look at that or CA. So probably they using something. Uh, related to uh, a cryptography. Remember, we are analyzing a ransomware, but we don't know exactly what answer is. But take a look at that. Delete files, move files, read files, write files, create files. Then take a look at that what, because remember of the name of the, the file, it's who is. But take a look what I see here, wanna cry. So it's a ransomware. You probably we, we don't know now what is exactly this ransomware. It's a wanna cry, right? Because you have this string here. So why we have this string here? So here we can see. So probably this is some uh, extension of the malware when the ransomware is executed in the victim machine. So probably the changing of the extension of the file. This is the common behavior from ransomware, and the ransomware changing all those extensions inside of the system operation. So as you can see here, it's basically so. And it's the, uh, the acronym, it, in this case, it means a wanna cry, right? So another thing here, it's um, to understand about this file, for example, is a read PE, it's another tool from the PEV project. By the way, this project created from the Fernand Mercedes, it's a Brazilian guy, it's a very nice, created from Fernand Mercedes and another researchers. And now it's maintained from, uh, I think it's from Debian, I don't remember exactly, but, uh, it's a very nice uh, project. Uh, let's see here who is once again. Are you using pipe less just to see some information about this specifically binary, right? So here we can see the structure of this portable executor. In this case, is DOS header, cough, or file header. But I would like just to show this information. Remember that I explained about the functions imported by the DLL, and here you can see this information. So take a look at that. This is the DLL, kernel 32 doc DLL, right? Kernel 32 doc DLL. Probably you are thinking now, Philippe, I don't know exactly what is the kernel 32 doc DLL. It's a good good point to, to search to, to, to search more, more information about this specific DLL. So you can see the information in the Microsoft website and to see what is exactly what you need to have this specific DLL inside of the windows and take a look what is exactly functions created or use it by this specific DLL and as you can see they use it to create a file to delete some critical sessions read a file so many many specific functions using from this specific DLL and as you can see they you are using the kernel 32 so maybe you are using the kernel lang probably i don't know i'm supposing now here okay it's another topic of course not we don't have a time to explain more details about that so take a look that and the user 32 dll they in this case we just using this specifically ws printing fa functions it's only only specifically function using by this dll 
So probably they're using these functions to print something, probably in the system operations. We need to investigate more about that. So take a look at this, this AD, uh, AD, ADV API 32 doc DLL. So this is another DLL using, and these is are specifically uh, functions using from this DLL. So take a look at that, nice. And uh, this is another DLL. So as you can see here, we have many, many DLLs using by that. And here you can see the session, as I mentioned, so doc text. Usually this is the place you use it by the attacker to put in something malicious, doc test or doc code, okay? This is the just a read only data, but the attacker can use in this specific session to put in some malicious, but usually this is the main session. Usually, once again, not common and doc data, it's another. And this is a doc or S or C, usually, not usually, this is the session responsible to, uh, to print the information to the user. When you see, for example, some uh, binary side of this your system operations, uh, it's like an image. Remember, for example, if you see some some, some binary or some file, uh, it's a, for example, it's a document Word. You can see the image from Word. If you see the PDF, you can see the PDF format, the image. So this is the, the session responsible to show you these informations, the image of the icon, okay? So this is the, the specific session using from the binary. Okay, nice. One, another information very interesting about this specific malware, it's about, let me explain here, strings dash A, once again, who is, but are you using here the grab? It's another tool to using to see more informations or to uh, to, to, to see uh, more details, but I would like to set dash A to try see a specific message or informations about these specific strings. I would like to search specifically using this another tool to find or to try and find this specific uh, word inside of this file, remember, using this string. So let's check here and what happened here. Take a look at that. What is exactly, Philip? So I found all those informations inside of these strings, okay? Obviously, because I using strings to find information who is using the grab to to find to to, to locate actually the specific message and I use this specifically expression regular here in this case message and take a look at the very interesting point here so message uh, slash m underscore Bulgarian Chinese Czech Danish Dutch English Finnish so what is exactly Philip? And this take a look back, doc W N or A W W um, Y actually, sorry. And, and this is basically is the message printed to the Vikman machine. In this case, probably the mower, in this case, who is it is a wanna cry. We know that is an wanna cry. Uh, they using some DLL, remember the DLL to see what is exactly the system operation of the victim machine. And after that, they will using some or another DLL to print the ransomware note. This is the message printed to the victim machine, actually, and uh, about the, the, <laughs> the infections, okay? So you are infected, your data is encrypted, is encrypted and this is the message, this is the ransomware note that appears to the victim machine. And as you can see here, all those languages use it by uh, these attackers. So as you can see here, you have a German and a Polish and Portuguese, <laughs> Spanish. I mean, you have a difference, many, many different uh, messages. So as we can see here, we can find many informations looking to the strings Again, remember, this is a not a reverse engineering, okay? This is just a first step when you're looking more deeply about the binary, because remember, we don't know if it's malicious or not. But now, let's check here once again. Uh, 256, sun, and who is, and I have here, this is the hash. I will copy that, 
I will put here and I will pass here. And let's see what happened in, in this case. Let's check this specifically hash and take a look that this is a what? It's a WannaCry cryptor. Okay, so yeah, it's a WannaCry, as we can see here. We didn't know, right? If is if is what kind of malware or ransomware it, uh, it was, it, and this specific uh, sample, and we see these informations using the strings to see about the DLL, to see about the strings, to see informations about that, and we found exactly a wanna cry. It is a wanna cry, right? So this is the very important thing. And let's compare. For example, I have here other samples, other malware like a ransomware. Uh, EXS, right? So let's see here, for example, the strings dash A, because it's another ransomware, right? And if here's another ransomware, probably they have um, another behavior. So they have here the doc text or, or data, really only data, doc data, and doc relocate. Take a look that we don't see here the or, S, or C. Remember this session? We didn't, we don't have here, it's a different behavior. So let's see, for example, read PE, in this case, ransomware, okay, wipe less, and let's see the structure here. Let me go to the, some DLL. So take a look at that, it's a kernel 32, and they're using this very, very important DLL. So let's see what kind of DLL they have here. Let's go to here, take a look at that. The, it's another user 32 doc DLL. Remember when you use into wanna cry, they don't, they, they mower, just have this specifically function. But if you see here, they using another function from this DLL using the lowercase and uppercase, uppercase. Take a look at that, it's a different, it's a different functions. So they need to using this specifically to import something. It's a different behavior. Oh, nice. Take a look at that. Oh, this is a, they're using this, the same DLL, but take a look at that. A specifically function using very, very crypto act, specific actions or specific functions using from this DLL. Remember, if you compare the malware, it's different behavior. So take a look what kind of crypto actions, not crypto, but actions of the cryptography inside of that. They use it a lot. And shell 32, it's another. Uh, only 32. So you see is a different behavior, different uh, kind of strings, different many informations. Let's, for example, to see more information about that the strings. So again, here, some, oh, nice. Take a look at the message box. So this is a very nice function because remember when you need to click in something in the in the some binary and appears to you the message box in the system operation this is the functions this happened because you have inside of your system operation this specifically functions to appears you this message box right so wow take a look at that. what exactly is that just take a look at that so this is some information different if you compare to one cry you have here we need to investigate what is exactly this number probably can be a good thing or not, but we need to, because here can see default uh, company name and here can be using some encoding techniques. I'm supposing, of course, I don't know if it's or not. Take a look at that. They using some cipher doc executable. So probably they using more than one or, or this specific malware can have, for example, inside of the, inside of the, it, inside of the malware, they can using some a dropper fun function because they have this executable inside of that and take a look at this, some specifically policies to disable using in the system operation. So take a look what very, very interesting because they're using the disable functions to probably disable the specifically policies using from the Microsoft. Very, 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 very nice, right? So, okay, I will finish here my, my presentations. Uh, we have here more than one. I will pass to, to Gabriel now to explain Gabriel. So how you can, you know, we have here, for example, many hashes malicious, right? So how we can protect or how we can suggest some protections to our uh, partners, customers, friends, and the, the, what you suggest here? 
Right, let's, uh, I'm going to explain all of that. Let's just share my screen here. So um, let me know when, uh, when my screen is visible, please. So yeah. I can start. Yeah, it's okay. So everyone can hear me clear. It's all good. My microphone is good. Yes, everything is okay. good. So uh, let's start here. So after understanding uh, more how ransomware uh, works, how can we manage to protect ourselves from ransomware using Senha Segura? Well, we have here the Senha Segura Go, which is a privilege and elevation and delegation management solution. For those who doesn't know what uh, PDM is, uh, it is a category of uh, uh, privileged access management, which is uh, more focused on granting more granular access uh, and reduce the risk of uh, uh, associated with uh, administrative rights, uh, associated with uh, specific tasks or applications. Uh, so here uh, at uh, Testing in Segura Go, uh, we can protect uh, from answers in three specific ways. So let's dive in, in the product. Uh, here is the face of the Sinistra Go. Okay, so we have the, the execute tab. Uh, and in the execute tab, all the applications installed on my machine or uh, scanned on some directory. So all folders, applications, and files will appear on this list. And uh, just to make it easier to, to the user to visualize which applications he can execute as an administrator. So here in my workstation, I am the common user. And the Sing and Segura Go is controlling all the policies for my workstation and uh, my user. So when creating a policy, we can define a set of criteria to identify which applications the user will be able to execute or not, um, based on our lists or deny lists. And uh, with this feature, uh, when uh, properly set up, uh, we can actively control and block any type of malicious applications, including uh, answers or any other types of members. So here in the Senha Segura Vault uh, is where we, uh, we uh, is where uh, that we create the policies. For example, here let me just edit this policy. Uh, in this case, uh, I have a deny list policy which will block uh, uh, the applications, and we have uh, many criteria uh, that these criteria can identify group of applications. So in this case, let me just put here a uh, product name. I will put here a uh, handle rule like hack. So if any application file folder includes uh, the hack in its name, the Senha Segura Go policy will deny the execution of that application. So just so, just so you guys can see, I have a process hacker application here which is uh, not a malicious, but it's a false positive uh, malware application. So if I uh, include this uh, policy here and save, after a few seconds, uh, if I refresh here, it, it should, uh, should appear here, this application blocked. So based on this um, policy that I created, now my user won't be able to execute uh, uh, this, uh, this application. Of course, this is uh, a superficial example of a policy. Uh, we can set up a more secure criteria such as uh, certificates, uh, vendor name, only trusted, uh, trustable uh, vendor names, uh, Windows Store Publisher, which indicates uh, trusted applications from the Windows Store, and many more. Uh, we also have uh, get guidelines for the uh, for the system implementation in general, just to make sure the policies are well built, so we can properly protect our customers. 
So this is the first uh, step or the first way that we can uh, actually, uh, actually protect uh, the endpoint uh, from executing any type of malware. Then we have the second feature uh, is the malware analysis feature. Let me just go back here and disable this, uh, this policy just to show you guys. Okay, uh, with, uh, with this feature, uh, we use Virus Total as well, uh, which uses more than 50 uh, trusted external authorities, which are experts in the analysis of malware. Let's suppose that by some reason, the policy was not set up uh, properly and the user was allowed to execute any answer. In this case, the process hacker. Let me just refresh here. Let me just update the policies again. So I can execute since I disabled the, the policy. Okay. So here, uh, when I try to execute an application, the Singing uh, Segura Go will send the hash file of the process hacker into the uh, virus total API, and we will scan for any type of malware uh, of this application. Let me just execute. Uh, as you can see, the analysis is in, uh, in progress. Uh, this process should take a couple of minutes, but it's just because we are using a free API, just uh, API, just for testing. But uh, when using the full version, uh, this scan should uh, take no longer than five seconds plus the upload time. Well, uh, while you will wait, uh, anyone has any questions until now? Yeah, we have a very interesting question. Um, the question is, uh, is there any integration between the common list of ransomware we just saw in the Sensegura solutions? Um, so so Sensegura Go knows what files and applications are marked as a ransomware? It's a good question. Yeah, so it's a great question. Well, um, when we set uh, policies, uh, we set um, some criteria uh, for trustable applications. With that, uh, that list of criteria, we can actually uh, set up uh, which applications are trustable and to identify which applications are marked as ransomware, uh, we use this specific function, which is the uh, malware analysis, which uh, I just made here. Uh, it, it just return the result. Since I cannot execute this application and the administrator was, uh, has been notified just because a malware was detected. And now this file was marked as a handsword. And if I, uh, I can notify this type of uh, uh, notification, so I can send uh, email to administrators, I can send this uh, message for the syslog, I can report these uh, events in the web application. So, this is how we can uh, identify and how Sing and Segura Go knows which applications are hand source. Uh, any more questions? Biohash filter is very interesting resource. Yes, it is. Uh, about Sing and Segura Go for VMware. Well, Sing and Segura Go for VMware, uh, it should have no problem uh, if uh, you mean like. Uh, there is no difference between uh, a real machine and a virtual machine. The Sing and Segura go now and running on my machine, but it just works uh, normally uh, as it should on any virtual machine, uh, any type of virtualization in general. Well, uh, let me move on. Uh, okay, nice. Uh, let me move on. So. As you can see, the answer wasn't executed. And this was the malware analysis feature. And finally, we have the ultimate scenario, which is when the workstation is already compromised. So let's suppose that the administrator did not set up the policy and neither the malware analysis. Uh, we have a third feature, which blocks automatically any type of lateral movement by the user and shut down any type of connection, which means uh, 
that even if the workstation is compromised, the system will protect the answer from propagating to other machines. So for this feature, it's pretty simple as well. You just need to go here on the vault, settings, parameters, and enable this parameter called uh, block access to the network. And in a matter of seconds, as you guys can, uh, as you guys saw, the policies will be synchronized very quick. And uh, this will be enforced on the workstation and will lock the answer inside one machine and preventing to propagating for uh, to other machines. Is there offline functionality for employees traveling with no access? Yes, uh, sure. Uh, this was uh, all the, the ways that we can protect uh, in general our, uh, our customers using Sin and Segura Go. And uh, we also uh, are able to identify this offline uh, in offline mode as research asked. So we also have other features in Sin and Segura Go. Uh, it's not just to protect malware and enhancers. We, the main function is to control uh, policies and, and what the user can execute or not. And the malware analysis is just a consequence of that. It just uh, to bring more security in general for the workstation. But uh, besides that, uh, the scene in Segura has many other features, including a offline mode. We have also single sign-on. We have task automation. We have filing folders, scan and control, which is pretty cool as well, that we can set up uh, scans on predetermined files and folders. And any type of uh, changes that the system identifies on that file or folder, we notificate or even prevent the, uh, the change uh, for that uh, file as well. Uh, we ha also have the commons restriction, restriction for PowerShell and CMD. We have UEC integration, uh, session recording as well for any type of execution when the user executes any type of application. We have automatic updates, password reflow, just-in-time access, and many other uh, more uh, functions. So. Uh, if you anyone has any more questions, please feel free to ask us. Yeah, nice. Um, show you uh, show you ball in some Portuguese. Awesome, awesome. And um, Gabriel, awesome, awesome uh, demonstrations. I don't know uh, if someone have any questions. Um, this is the, the idea. So remember, I explained more about the some behaviors about the ransom, the binary, and Gabriel explained more about how the senior Segura Go can protect you or can it help you with protections with this kind of uh, kind of attack. And uh, remember, Senior Segura has a different products, different approach, but the Senior Segura Go it's a specific functions that you can use in your environment and um, a product actually. And uh, if you have any questions, and uh, I don't know if some doubts about that, and you can you know, send a message with us here in the chat or Q&A, or even if you prefer to send a message in the social medias, maybe you are, have some shame, <laughs> you can feel free. And um, we have, um, let's see here, we have one, um, let's check here. Once again, we have the yeah, yeah, yeah. You're welcome. They have team are telling me about the 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 winner, the draw winner, right? Yes, 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 yes. Okay. So again, if you don't have more questions, let me tell you what is the winner of our the draw winner is. Oh my goodness, I don't know if I can pronounce correct name, but it's a crazy mir Georgievi. Yeah, I don't know. Sorry for, for my pronunciation, probably it's wrong, but the name is, let's, I will write here in the chat, but this is the winner of our draw. This is the, this is the name, crazy mir Georgievi. 
right? This is correct, Mateus and Gabriel, right? And um, I think, yes, I don't know everyone if you have any more questions. So I would like to say thank you for everyone for staying here with us and uh, for this opportunity to, to these conversations. Gabriel, would you like to, to, to tell us something more? Uh, we have a, uh, another question here. What yeah, happens yeah. if the scene Segura Go is down for any reason regarding the rules applied? Well, scene Segura Go is only down when the connectivity between the workstation, which have the scene Segura Go clients, is, uh, is down from the scene Segura Vault. So when this connection is down, we actually uh, we enable the uh, offline mode automatically. So the rules will be applied in the same way as well. Um, so as you can see, let me just demonstrate here real quick. We have just the offline mode. When I start the offline mode, the uh, will be created uh, a cache, a local cache. So all the policies and all the applications the user can execute uh, and which not uh, will be stored locally in an uh, encrypted database, uh, of course. And the user will keep, uh, uh, will keep executing those uh, applications as well, as normally as he would, uh, as he would be on online. And when he comes back online, when this connection uh, is restored, all the session recording, all the logs, all the information about what the user executed is going to be sent to the scene Segura Vault and will be synchronized and will be identified in the real time uh, which uh, the application was executed when he was offline. Cool. I hope I was okay. clear enough. Uh, yeah. I'd like to thank everyone as well. So thank you so much for your attention. Yeah, thank you so much again. And if you uh, have any more questions, please. Sorry to interrupt you, Felipe. Yeah, no, no worries about that. So I, I just like to say thank you for everyone. And again, we have a, a, our social medias and the Ciencia Segura social media in LinkedIn and Twitter. Uh, and yeah, thank you everyone. And see you, see you in the next uh, webinar. See you guys. Thank you.